Hey, everybody. This is Anna, and today I have a friend and colleague, Sharon, uh, to teach us how to make her impossible chili recipe with vegan cornbread. So I'm going to be following along, and um, I hope you will too. How's it going, Sharon? Thanks, Anna. I'm really excited to show you guys how to make this. So we're going to do the cornbread first, and then we'll switch over to the chili. So I've got some things kind of prepped and ready to go. Um, but the first step for the skillet cornbread is to make your flax egg. So to do that, if you're not familiar with flax seed, it has to be ground, perfect. So you take one tablespoon of that and three tablespoons of cold water, and then you put it in the fridge for about five minutes. So I'm gonna grab my fridge. And Sharon, why do you need to put it in the fridge? Cause I didn't do that. I just let it set out. Yeah, so time. sitting is fine. It's just a little warm out. It kind of makes it a little bit more Thick. Oh, gelatinous -y. Yeah, because yeah, this is a replacement for an egg. Yeah. So it works perfectly in recipes like pancakes or when you're baking something, it's basically the same thing. Um, so what we're going to do first is mix all the dry ingredients and then we're going to put, um, do, do the wet ingredients and mix them together. So for the dry ingredients, you have a cup of flour. Mm -hmm. So you got that in a bowl. So you can put this in a smaller bowl because you're going to mix it into the big one. A cup of cornmeal. I don't really have a preference. This is Bob's Red Mill. That oh, I that's what I used. Okay, perfect. And then we've got a third of a cup of sugar. I'm I using coconut sugar. Is that okay? I'm trying it. Try it. Yeah, we'll try it. I don't know if that has like a chewiness factor to it. I'm not sure. Okay. Um, maybe it's more like brown sugar is what I'm mm -hmm. saying, but um, yeah, just regular sugar. And then four teaspoons of baking powder, which is here. And I actually put it with the salt already. And this is a half teaspoon of salt. So it's a lot of baking powder. Uh, make sure it's baking powder, not baking soda. And this is what makes uh, think baked goods rise, which is really funny because you think that it's the egg and it's not, it's just baking powder. So this is basically like how you can cook without eggs all the time. So I'm just gonna put that into the dry ingredient bowl. So now I've just got a bowl of all things mixed together. I'm gonna whisk it up. And so now that's the dry ingredients ready to go. And then the next step, is the wet ingredients. Okay, so for that, we have a cup of almond milk here, and I'm gonna put it in my mixer. Oh, but you could just do it by hand too. I mean, if you have a mixer, it's a reason to use it, but it's just it's fine just whisking it in. So I just put in a cup of almond milk. I use unsweetened non-vanilla, so that's just a good baking thing to have on hand because it doesn't have any flavor to it. Um, and then we're gonna put in that flax egg. And you'll see it, look, it kind of looks like an egg when you pour it in. Um, and then we've got a third of a cup of vegetable oil of your choice. Is it okay? I'm using, <laughs> so what I have is avocado oil and I don't know if you can see, but it's like extremely green. So I'm a little concerned that my cornbread is going to have a nice green little green, green tea to it. That's cool. <laughs> I haven't used avocado oil before. Is it good? Uh, I love avocado oil. Okay. So those three things are in. Now I'm just going to turn on the mixer and mix it up. Your mixer is so beautiful. I love the clear bowl, Sharon. Yeah. And then this little whisk thing on the end is great too. It's like, I don't know if you can see it, but it's not the standard metal one, but it like does a really good job of wiping the sides. Yeah, I'm doing this super janky. I'm like, I put everything in a measuring cup. <laughs> okay, so mix the two together. Okay. Do you have a favorite, did you get this particular recipe from a cookbook or a blog? It is a smattering of recipes that I've read about. Mm. It actually started as um, blueberry cornbread. And so this is really great. I do the same thing, but then I, at the end, I take fresh blueberries and like 
poke them into the uh, cast iron skillet. So like they're beautifully like laid across the top. So you just poke them down a little bit until they're covered and it makes like excellent breakfast. Um, and then actually that was inspired by this uh, restaurant in Austin that we love called Bolding Creek Cafe. And they serve their blueberry cornbread and maple syrup on top for brunch and it's delicious. So I got it there and was like, I gotta do this at home. And so it kind of just evolved from that. Whenever I go to a restaurant and I try something new, I'm like, how can I make that too? Because it's so good and I'm not gonna be able to go back anytime soon. So yeah, my <laughs> I think my cornbread is going to look super healthy. It's gonna be, I'm gonna call it granola cornbread. <laughs> I took a lot of, um, I made a lot of substitutions that I have in my pantry. That's, I'm, I think it'll probably turn out really good still. Okay, so now it's mixed and now I'm just gonna pour it into my cast iron skillet. Oh. To measure. Okay. Mine is just over 10 inches. Okay. So, I don't know how different sized yours is. Yeah, uh, this is an eight inch square pan. I'm gonna okay. cook it in the brava. Oh, cool, okay. So my, my recipe says to cook for 20 to 25 minutes, but just like with every baking thing, you're just gonna check it then and see how the top looks and use a uh, toothpick to check it and make sure that it's cooked. Um, and what temperature are you cooking at? Oh, it's at 425. 425 okay yeah, so what's, what's the difference between doing it in a skillet and doing it in a brava or an oven oh so i'm gonna bake it i'm gonna put what? this in the oven oh you will bake it oh okay, okay. yeah it's i'm gonna bake, bake mine too in yeah in the brava yeah i'm just using the bake feature can you see that I'm yeah going. you said 425 so for bread it? feature yeah yeah, there is. No. There is. Yeah. So Sharon, you said you developed this recipe. This is like your recipe that you came up with. Well, it's like, I feel like that's like strong to take credit for. It's like an evolution of multiple recipes. If you can count that. So yes. Awesome. I cannot wait. I've okay. not made cornbread in a while. Cornbread. I like how in two skillet. different methods or two different versions so you can see. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yours is going to be good. So I'm just going to put it in the oven now. Great. Sure. I'm, I'm a little behind, but did you just mix all of that in your kitchen aid? Kyle, yeah. the it. wet stuff and then the dry stuff and then put them together. Okay, cool. Thanks. Are you doing this now, Kyle? Uh, trying to. I got all the. Uh, Chili stuff prep, but I don't have the um, flax, the uh, corn cornbread stuff prep. So I'm doing that a little behind. If you don't have a flax seed, you can use a normal egg too. Uh, uh, I went to the store and I got everything. So I'm. You got it. Oh, yeah, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. So you want to do one tablespoon of that, three tablespoons of cold water, and then just give it a couple minutes to firm up. You can stick it in the freezer for just a couple minutes, but don't forget about it. Okay, so cornbread's in. I'm gonna set a timer for that. I'm gonna go on the low end just in case. So I'm gonna do 20 minutes. So now that that's done, I'm gonna start on the chili. And so I started to prep some of the ingredients and then I ran out of time. Yeah, same. <laughs> what I wanted to show was how to chop an onion. Um, I went to cooking class a couple months ago as a Christmas gift, and I got my first chef's knife, which I don't even know what I was working with before that, um, and a nice cutting board. And I learned how to officially chop and dice an onion the right way. Um, and so that's Can you move the move your camera down a little? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So let's do it. Okay, so you have the onion. You got the root side, you got the top side. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna cut off the top side and just try to do it as level as possible, like as even. 
So here I go. I haven't tried peeling it yet because it's easier to do it later. So I took off the top. I'm going to discard that. I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to cut through this root directly hmm. across. Okay, so cutting through. Now I've got two pieces here with the root on the bottom. And now it's a lot easier to peel it when it's in this state. Pull back, try to keep that root piece here because that's gonna keep it together. Hmm. Okay, so the next step is to cut across a few times this way. And then I'm gonna turn, I can't see my, oh yeah, I can. Um, and then I'm gonna cut this way after. Hmm. And I'm gonna go across. So step one is to go this way. Wow. Okay, so that was three cuts, but just depending on the size of your onion, you can do more or less. And now I'm gonna come across here. So I'm not touching, going all the way to the root, but I'm going close to it. Yeah. I'm such a good student, Sharon. I was, I was taught that way too, and I'm like, I'm gonna just revert back to my old ways and habits of doing things. But yeah. it's much more effective. So now that I've got those first cuts um, horizontal, and then I did the vertical, now I'm gonna try to hold it together and I'm just gonna cut straight across here. So hopefully you can see that, but what you'll see are like diced onions, like little pubes. Hmm. And then I just get rid of the bottom piece. It's really hard to cut through. And then if you wanted to make it even finer, then you could do like the, just cutting it a little bit more. I'd be faster at this than me, but um, just trying to get used to the holding position, but you just want to make sure your hands, your fingers are safe. You definitely cut yourself there. Okay, so that was one half. I'm going to cut the other half and speed it up a bit. Your eyes aren't watering too much. I'm glad you can't see my eyes right now because they're about <laughs> You know what's weird is when I'm wearing contacts, my onions don't make me cry. But if I'm not, then it's a disaster. Isn't there a way to cut it, or is that a rumor? So it's that's it's a rumor. I haven't found it. I've tried all the ways. Hmm. I've done like goggles. Wow, my eyes are watering just looking at this. <laughs> yeah, like, but I've heard like you hold a matchstick in your mouth. Oh, really? Lit or not lit? Not lit. <laughs> And yeah, I haven't found anything, but if like that sounds like a BCO idea to me. <laughs> <sighs> it's really satisfying watching you chop. Mm -hmm. Have your own, yeah, keep doing the, you should do a cooking show. <laughs> How's Kyle keeping up? I'll catch up once I get the cornmeal in. <laughs> you need a sous chef. Do you have Dad a sous chef? Yeah. Okay, so that's chopped. Also a good knife skill is to place blade out at the back of your board so you don't cut your hands. Hmm. Um, okay, so the ingredients for the chili were to start with a little bit of oil on the bottom of the pan we're going to put in um, the diced onion, um, also the garlic cloves. We should go ahead and put those in at the same time. Um, garlic too, you said? What? You said garlic? Yeah. Okay. It's further down the list. I guess while I'm at it, I might as well finish chopping up the jalapenos. Um, I was told that the heat is in the seeds for the most part, and I want like a little bit of spice, so I'm not doing it like perfectly where I'm de-seeding it completely, but I got most of the heart of the seeds out of the jalapeno already. Um, so now I'm just like cutting them in little slivers here. Just casually crying right now. 
How much garlic do you put in? How much what? Garlic. Uh, three garlic cloves. Oh, so you can, if you're doing powdered garlic, what's the, do you know the conversion rate of dry seasoning to fresh? Well, like one teaspoon to one tablespoon of fresh, like one teaspoon of dry. What do you normally do? I just like always have garlic on hand, so I use a lot of it. Um, I don't know, I've read different things. That's a Google question usually. Yeah, I can Google it if you need. Yeah, Google it. Okay, what is the question? How many? How much uh, garlic relates to or is uh, equivalent to uh, dry garlic powder? Hmm. One eight teaspoon of garlic powder equals one small clove of garlic. So you can use the following measurements. Garlic powder substitute one eighth teaspoon powder for every clove of garlic. Or mm -hmm. Yes, you're, you're spot on, Anna. Yeah, good job. Um, how, how many jalapenos did you cut? I did two. Okay, great. And I took out most of the seeds, but, you know, I leave a little because I don't add any other spice to it. My dad is so funny, you know, being a Texan. So Sharon and I are both Texans. My dad keeps a stash of, like, surgical gloves just for... Oh, wow. Just for all of the like jalapeno handling he does. A really good That's idea smart. for me to wash my hands now. Yeah. It's hard to, don't you need like lemon or something to get it off? Oh, really? I don't know. I could, these are all things I don't, I don't know where I've gotten these. One time uh, we chopped serrano peppers, which are spicier. And I think like that meal, we had to like keep our fingers emerged in baking. It was like a baking soda mix of water. Wow. It could take away the burn. Yeah, I'm just worried I, about I, you guys tonight when you wash your faces. I, I chopped serrano and jalapeno, and then um, under my fingernails, it's been like burning for the last couple hours because I think I got my hands in the seeds. Okay. Careful. Yeah. Where's the baby? Can the baby make an appearance? Oh. Unless, she's, unless she's sleeping. We don't want to wake her. I just put her in a chair. But here we go. It's oh, she's cool. watching Dad cook. Oh, oh. Yeah, oh, she's so cute. Yeah, she's a little, she's a little socialite. Hi, I'm oh. Anna. Hi, my name's Marie. Nice to meet you. Uh, Hi, I'm Sharon. Hi, I'm Chrissy. I'm excited. Are you cooking with dinner? Sorry, what? I said, are you helping with dinner? Are you helping cooking? Yes. <laughs> Where are we with the chili? Where are we at? Okay, yeah, we're going to start it now. So you got all the ingredients chopped. Yeah. Now turn on the stove with your big pot. It's always better to use a bigger pot because you don't want to run out of space and have to switch midway. So go ahead and get the stove going. Put a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan. Use your discretion. I'd say it's probably like two tablespoons, but whatever you will. Wait for the oil to heat up a little bit. And then I'm going to throw in the onions, the garlic, the jalapeno, and the shredded uh, carrots. Oh, you shred the carrots. <laughs> you can dice them. I think either would taste really good. I don't remember what I did when I made it for class, honestly, Anna. Because I don't remember like doing the, the shredding motion, but maybe I just chopped them. Um, I like the idea of shredding them. Is this too loud? Should I mute myself? No, okay. Here's my shredded carrots here. Wow. I have like a really massive carrot. How much how many cups do you think you use? How many what? How many cups of carrot do you use? It's one. So I did like three good sized carrots, but two is fine. And you can hold both of them at the same time. I think it works like you double time it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and keep keep moving and throw the garlic in. 
Hey, Sharon, where should I have the oven going for the cornbread? 425. Okay, thanks. This is a workout. I'm so sorry. Chrissy, your class is amazing. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I was worried it was a little too fast. Did you guys like it? I it was really it. fun. Thank it's you. Did you guys see so Max? Quickly. What? The time passed so quickly. Oh, good. I'm glad you guys liked it and worked out a sweat. Yes. Right before eating. I'm not making the chili. We're getting yeah. my dad. We're getting a sea, uh, sushi takeout. I haven't had it since the quarantine. So I'm excited, but I'm learning. I'm picking up a few tricks like cutting an onion. And Anna, when you taught, I forgot what you were making. Oh, Indian food. And I learned that you don't want to, you want to scratch off all the brown stuff made from the onions. Cuts flavor. Oh, the, the pan fond. Yeah. I learned something new there too. Karen, did you learn that in your, your class? Did you, did you what? Like when you caramelize the onions, that the brown stuff at the bottom of the pan, you should scrape off because it's really all the flavor. Yeah. Well, I never knew that. a natural thing I always do. And it's like, is that gross? But that's what tastes good. It's like, the flavor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I made some roasted, like pan fried um, diet potatoes like breakfast potatoes and mm. I popped up a red bell pepper and those red bell peppers at the end of it like once it was in the skillet for a while that was the best part better than with the potato oh it's so good I want I think I just want your your uh meal prep list Karen yeah I think you should share it with everybody. I'll need it when I go back to the real world yeah, I uh, love making good food. And I've got my impossible here too. I feel like I'm kind of doing it out of order, but we're going to roll with it. You usually grab it first and then do the veggies. Oh, oh, yeah. So what should we do now? Um, I could do it in a different pan and then bring it over. Yeah, let's do it in a different pan. Sharon, question about the impossible meat. Somebody mm -hmm. was asking, where did you find it in LA? Yeah, so it's been at Gelson's for a while. So it's usually always there. So that would be a good place to check. But as of last week, they started carrying it at both Bonds and at Kroger. All the Kroger sub brands. So that y'all have it in so many locations. I can't even find it in San Francisco. Like they're headquartered here. It's not fair, possible. Can I start drinking wine? Are we far enough where I won't make any big mistakes? I'm thinking about cracking open some wine too. So you'll be in good company. All right, good. Do you go the meat with no oil, or do you spray oil on the pan? I feel like they already have oil in the. So previously I haven't. Okay. So here it is. Here's the impossible meat. Hmm. Looks so how crazy is that? It's like got little puddles of blood around the edges. Well, what is that? It's um Anna, do you wanna <laughs> oh, yeah, Christian, you weren't in our class. So no, just... no, but I tried it. It was good. So they actually um discovered through uh they hired like the best microbiologists in the world to discover what is it about meat that makes it so delicious. And it's uh, hemoglobin, which is basically blood. Um, yeah. So they discovered that it's in high, it's highly concentrated in the roots of soy beans. So they um, created what's called phytohemoglobin. So phyto means plant. Um, so I went to their labs and I got to see the labs where they produce this plant blood, you know, phytohemoglobin. So they don't extract it from soybean roots any longer because it's not very environmentally friendly. Um, they culture it using yeast. So they take those like um, the soybean cells or whatever it is and culture them in yeast cells. And they have these like giant vats are like this big and there's, you know, 30 of them or something in a room. It's very interesting. Yeah. Interesting. 
Right. And then just for, I think, the full effect, you should see browning because it looks like meat. Yeah. So are you, you kind of crushed it up all around the pan? Yeah, I just used a little spatula to kind of break it up. But like, look at the, you can see like the browned part. Move it over a little. We got, we got spatula. Oh, wow. We're going to just break, break this up, I guess. It's great. Um, yeah. Vegetarian. Yeah, it's John sausage. You want sausage? It's really good, especially where. Oh I'm yeah, like the hot Italian is definitely the best one. Okay, cool. So we're gonna. Yeah, those chop. are really okay. good. Yeah. You can put it in like pasta sauce, or I put it on pizza. Yeah, we do too. Yeah, I just made some with pasta. Really oh, good. Actually, we made a pizza too with it um, oh, yeah. last week. Oh. Kyle, I'm sorry. What is your wife's name again? I want to make sure. Marie. Anne Marie. And Izzy. Sorry. Izzy's the daughter. Oh, yeah. Isabel Izzy. Yep. yep, yep. Anne Marie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's so nice to meet you. I'm so glad you're here. I feel like we don't really get to. She's pretty much a classmate because she's like in the shit with everything that <laughs> I do, you know? So, like, it's really not I know, too much of a leap, I think, for her to. To chime in, so. That's fun. Yeah. I miss school a little bit. Oh, he should tell you about that time that I totally beat him in our negotiation activity, and he was like talking a big game, like, "Oh yeah, I took a week's course in negotiations. Like, this is what you got to do." And I beat. Tell me that. <laughs> oh, in our negotiations class? No, not nego. We had like a we had like a exercise in Omens class, I think. Yeah. And he was talking a big game, like, oh, yeah, I'm going to, this is how you do it, Chrissy. And it was just funny because I got a higher score in the end. But you I didn't know what you told me at the end of the class. What did I tell you? That I'm the only person that's um, going to fail the class. <gasps> oh, wait, what? Yeah, you're going to be the only person that doesn't pass this class. Why did I say that? At the end of the class, at the end of that period. Well, was there, at the end, well, why, what did, what triggered me? I couldn't have just said that out of nowhere. <laughs> I was um, trying to tell you to do the homework, but I wasn't doing it right. And I was like, oh, oh well, he wasn't doing that. He just, okay, Marie, he just didn't turn in the homework sometimes. And I'd be like, why? And he's like, I don't know, shit came up. And I'm like, what? I should give Marie your syllabus to make sure you stay on track. No, yeah. I'm very organized. So that probably would help. That's, yeah. See? See, See? He, he got a planner and he hasn't been using it. I've been like, you just. <laughs> um, by the way, do we have a memo due for omens class is that i need to get a memo today no that's on the 17th right okay, it's you. i was just no i have to do i have to make and i have your email i have to address too yeah he's making us like talk. That keeps, keeps me on track with assignments oh yeah who me <laughs> oh, i know but we're not yeah we're not doing a great job no, i'm just kidding <laughs> we're okay right now okay so my meat's brown so i'm gonna go ahead and add it back to the big pot are you, do you put all of it, including all of the fat? You don't drain it or anything? Yeah, I don't actually have any fat, really. It's like kind of. And all this saucy hemoglobin or whatever? Yeah. Yeah. It's disappeared. Yeah. So it's kind of just there now. I think it would have been fine to use the same, the same pot, but because it's like not meat, so it's not like you're mixing raw food. That's true. Yeah. Did you, so yours had a lot of browning on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, since we're doing the um, Beyond, and it oh, doesn't really look brown just yet. Maybe just yeah, mine got like crispy edges, just like ground beef. Cool. Nice. Okay, so I'm gonna add in the uh, it's that's the cornbread timer. So I'll check it. Um, two tablespoons of chili powder and one tablespoon of ground cumin. And it's good to do it before you add in all the liquid. So you get a little bit of toastiness to the seasoning before you just kind of dilute it down. So you're basically just doing that for some extra flavor. Can you repeat how much of each spice? It's um, two tablespoons of chili powder and one tablespoon of ground cumin. And I'm gonna check on the cornbread. Hey, how long light it... yellow on top you want it to be like a golden yellow color my oven's to temperature how long should i put it in for 20 to 25 minutes start with 20 did you grease your pan 
I did, yeah. <laughs> Marie, Marie reminded me. She goes, you better grease that. And I go, oh, good idea. I didn't say that explicitly, but I yeah. hope that you would. Um, yeah, t start with 20 minutes and then you can check back and see how it's doing. I just checked at 20 and it's a very faint yellow and I want mine a little bit darker. Okay, I think I put mine on 20 minutes. Still has four minutes. It smells good though. Does it smell like avocado? <laughs> no, it smells like cornbread. Mm. I also, I, I really went rogue. I, um, I put it cup for cup. Um, gluten-free flour in it. <laughs> so we'll we'll see how this goes. What type of gluten-free flour did you use? Cup for cup. What what was your gluten-free substitute flour? Cup for cup. It's common. That's the brand. Yeah. Oh, I've never heard of it. I was like, I keep asking this. Well, it actually has half of that and half of um, Bob's Yard Mill, which is uh, theirs is called like one for one. So, so the chili powder goes where? The meat? The meat? I think so. Um, I put it in the pan with the onions. Okay. Okay. I think it's going to meat. <laughs> yeah, you go rogue, Kyle. Put it in the meat. That's all great. Do the flavors you like and the way you like it. I think when we did Anna's pasta sauce, it was kind of the same thing. Like you know what flavor profile you like. It really spicy, put in another jalapeno. So Sharon, you cooked your meat in a cast iron? Oh, that was just a nonstick. Ah, uh, just yeah. like a small omelet size nonstick, nothing fancy. And then I'm cooking the like a bigger uh, stainless steel. It's not bad. It's gigantic. Um, but I've learned it's really tough to change pots when you run out of space. If you yeah. <laughs> Just go bigger before you have to deal with that mess. I think I got this tomato sauce. Uh, that's going in the chili. So you already got, once everything's browned and you've got the onion, carrot, jalapeno, the meat, the spices in, the next step is to add the diced tomatoes. Okay. Sorry, I didn't realize it wasn't on mute. I was talking to myself. I didn't realize. Oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. Jalapeno going in. Woo, good luck. Um. Oh yeah, and then add, add some salt. This is again discretion. I use kosher salt, so I keep it in this little thing. And I'm probably gonna add like two good pinches. Two pinches? Yeah. And then you can always um, salt more later. As it cooks, the flavor will change. So I try really hard to like not put too much in now and wait for the flavors to kind of come together. Okay. I do like things on the saltier side, so it's something I have to watch. Cheers, y'all. I feel like we're far enough. I can enjoy a glass of wine now. You deserve it. <laughs> so now I'm adding in my diced tomatoes and my tomato sauce. Um, how much, how big are your tomatoes? Is it a large can? A what? It's a large can of tomatoes, yes. Yeah, I did like a double can, so. Yeah. Um, oh, my cornbread might be ready. And then I'm just using a whole can of tomato sauce. I'm like, I'm not a measure. So even though the instructions may say one and a half cups, I would never pour it like into a measuring cup to then pour it in. You know, you know what that's called when you don't measure something? Because I do that too. It's called yeah. Frenching it. What is it? Frenching it. You're oh, Frenching, Frenching it. it. Yeah. Okay. You're just doing what you want to do. You can add a little of this, a little of that. <laughs> The problem is that Marie Frenches when she bakes. <laughs> oh, that, she bakes that's a little different when it comes to Frenching. So, yeah, not a baker. 
I agree with that. There is like no messing with baking powder. Yeah. Soda. It's like a chemistry experiment, you know? Like. Yeah. In my head, I think I can do it. Like there's a way, but it never, it never works out. <laughs> This is looking incredible. I'm really, I'm getting excited now. Um, and then the beans, I drained and rinsed them. I'm doing one kidney, one black. You could do whatever combination you have on hand. Uh, I just. And then when does the meat go into the veggies? Once you browned it. Okay, cool. And now that's like, those are all the ingredients. I'm going to check the cornbread. My cornbread's done. Yeah, mine Ooh. Looks good. Oh, that looks great. Um, I got to work on my beans. All right, so you said you did black beans and cornbread. Ooh. Wow, beautiful. So, yeah, we got the chili made. Uh, now it's just got to sit for a little while. And then you can salt and pepper it later. So that's basically done. So cornbread's done. Chili just needs, I would give it like 20, 30 minutes. Oh, can you wait that long? What do you mean? She wants to eat it now. Oh, to eat it. Oh yeah, we'll go for it. Okay, so I'm gonna bring the camera over so you can see the, the chili. So I'm gonna turn down the heat just a little bit but you can see the mixture here, everything's in. But I do think you wanna give the flavors a little bit more time to like come together. And then we got the cornbread here as well. Will you put like simmer it and let it sit for a half an hour? That's what, I, yeah, I think you should do that for the chili. Homework, is that what you're trying to say? Oh man, <laughs> it never ends. But yeah, it's uh, it's about ready. So, and I think it changes like the consistency of the chili, like as you cook it a little bit more. Um, so it'll get a little bit more liquidy as it warms up, and then it'll kind of get a little bit more like stew-like later. I do that with uh, black beans if I make like real black beans. It takes a really long time, but it's really because you're like kind of boiling it down and like getting all the flavors compressed in and getting the beans a little softer. Mine's really thick already. It's gonna it's gonna like get more liquidy and then it'll get back to being thicker again. I'm really excited. So let's see. Kyle, how's it going over there? Oh man, let, let us show you. Uh oh. <laughs> She's having a decent time, but uh, this is looking great. Wow. So, yeah, browning that meat really, and with the chili powder, really got a lot of good flavor in there. We're really excited. Do you have corn in yours? Uh, no. Oh, okay. You could put in corn if you like corn. Okay. Cool. Um, I'm going to head off, but send me pictures of what your guys' uh, uh, chili looks like later. Bye, Chrissy. Thanks, guys. Have fun. Thanks, Chrissy. Bye. Bye. So I think that's it. Now I've just got to get my sous chef in here to clean up. Just kidding. Um, so you, wow, do you like, this is, this looks like a lot of servings. Do you put half in the freezer? For another time, or what do you? Before, not with this. I haven't actually done it with the impossible. The original recipe that I adapted this from used uh, bulgur, that really thick grain. Oh yeah. It and so I frozen that, and that's been great. I would guess impossible would be fine frozen too. Yeah. 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 For I one, this is a lot. For when I was pregnant, and it usually lasts up to three months, so I'm guessing you could probably do the same. Yeah. I mean, it acts like meat in all other ways, so I don't see why it would. Yeah. I just, I don't know that I can go through tens <laughs> or on my own. Just host a bunch of people virtually. <laughs> and be like one for you. <laughs> yeah, see, so mine's getting liquidy again, so it's got to like cook a little bit more and then it'll turn back into stew. 
Do you cover it? No, not really. Do you think I should? No, I was just curious. Yeah, can you see mine? Mine is like really, really thick. But it's good. Like it's super, it's super it's, this is like perfect chili. Yeah, it's not soup, it's chili. Chili, it's thick. It's good. Yeah. Oh god. I can't wait. Hey, uh, what's a flax egg? The the flaxseed in cold water. What does that do when you combine the two? Yeah, so it's it's a substitute for an egg. So flax is like really good for you nutritionally. Yeah. It doesn't do anything if it's like the full seeds. You always have to grind it. So basically, don't ever buy the whole uh, flax seeds unless you want to like okay. yourself at home. Yeah, we have ground. That's why I buy it. I put it in smoothies. Yeah, it says, uh, yeah like exactly. Yeah. So once it's ground and it mixes with water, I think it's just like one of those magical things that like it turns into like a almost like a, an egg. Like it's kind of gelatinous. So it's a substitute for egg. Yeah. Wow, That's I never cool. knew that. Love yeah. it. And so you still need like baking powder. Baking powder to me is like what makes cooked baked things rise. Um, but you don't need it. You really honestly don't need eggs for anything. Like I bake everything normal. Like you could quiz me on what I've baked. Depending on what you're using, I might say to use a different substitute egg. Like sometimes I use applesauce, like unsweetened applesauce if I'm making like a chocolate cake. When I made like a tiered chocolate cake, um, that's what I use instead. But for the most part, the flax egg works really well. That's cool. Yeah, I like couldn't believe it. I was like, how is... Yeah. <laughs> she wanted to be part of the party. Yeah. <laughs> Jules, are you still online? I am. I was just about to say, I just used a uh, banana um, for my egg replacement in my um, vegan scones. Oh, nice. Good idea. So what kind of scones did you make? I made blueberry, blueberry lemon. Oh, yum. Yeah. Like I am... I'm headed towards the very healthy route. So I got, you know, like vegan butter, all that good stuff. So, um, and then in regards to impossible, I can't unfortunately have impossible because it's mostly soy based versus pea based. So I have to do um, beyond meat instead. Well, we the beyond meat products pretty good too. Would you be able to send that recipe? Cause I just got a bunch of blueberries and that sounds so good. <laughs> So actually, um, I could send you what I replaced, but if you guys want to watch the show, Vanessa, totally <laughs> uh, oh, prepping her up on here. She baked some, uh, van uh, some blueberry and lemon scones on the One Anderson channel. Oh. And then all I did was replace everything with vegan products. Okay. But oh. th Sharon, thanks for that note about the uh, baking powder because you know, I think that's going to be very helpful. So since we're like maybe just a couple minutes, can I show all my vegan substitutes that I use? Definitely. Be Okay. So closet where my fridge isn't super in the lip this, but Earth Balance is the brand that I use. I think it's great. I use it when I bake cookies. Um, I prefer this over coconut oil personally. I know this isn't healthy, but it works really well. And like, no one should eat butter all the time. So I kind of treat it the same. Um, you can eat butter all the time? What? <laughs> this is uh, miso. I keep this on hand all the time. This I use in different salad dressings. Sometimes if I'm making like an Asian vinaigrette, um, I'll use that. There's a sweet green salad that I love called the shroomami. And I learned how to make it again from scratch and that dressing needs. I love that. Yeah, I want to make that recipe. Can we do that next week? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That sounds amazing. I love miso, yeah. We uh, we planted a garden. We have all this lettuce and all these greens. So that sounds amazing. This is just it's mm, I love that. Mm -hmm. scrambled eggs. It's made from bean sprouts. Oh, Mung bean. Mung bean. Yeah. So this looks just like scrambled eggs. You can make an omelet out of it. I personally have not used it as an egg substitute, like in a baked thing, because I think the flax egg thing works well and that's like healthy. Um, but this is like also 
pretty healthy. This has soy in it, though, unfortunately, unfortunately, Jewel. So this probably wouldn't be a good food for you, but. Yeah, I'm finding that being a vegan may not be an option for me because of all of my allergies. So soy, miso, it sucks. So I have to find alternatives. Oh, that's right. Oh, there is a, there's a chickpea miso. It's, it's miso, but it's made from chickpeas. Yeah, chickpeas is on that no eating list also. Oh, okay. And then I have made something really special. This is going to be kind of odd to show. <laughs> cheese from scratch oh my god cheese <gasps> yeah so in here i've got cheddar and pepper jack and then i've got mozzarella in the fridge and i made that from sprouting quinoa and making rajabic it's like a kind of like what's in sauerkraut so this is what the finished product looks like and then i use this and a couple of magic ingredients including something from algae called um agar powder yeah, agar 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 yeah. yeah and i use cat uh cashews and a couple of seasonings and i like turn out with like, real blocks of cheese girl you got to share that recipe or teach us how to make it because yeah, i miss like cheese. A month process <laughs> Oh, that's all. It's really easy. It's a really easy thing. It's just one of those things that's like every couple days you're doing one thing that takes two minutes and then you have to go back and like do this other stuff. Wow. And it takes a month to create your own cheese? Well, it takes like a week. It takes about three days to sprout the quinoa and then you fill the quinoa jar with water and then you wait until that starts fizzing again. So that's like two days and then you have the base. But if you're not paying attention, then it can kind of stretch out to a week. Um, and then you have to mix it up with the cashews. So you, blend, you need a, a Vitamix or a high power blender. So you make this mixture, you put that in a glass jar, let that sit at room temperature for about two days. Then you take that and boil it with a couple of other magic ingredients, pour that into a mold and refrigerate it and then you have your cheese. So it's a long process, it's not hard, but I use uh, Miyoko's recipe. She oh, Miyoko's I love it. So wait, does it taste like her products or better? No. no, I don't think so. This is the book though, it's called The Vegan Pantry. Um, um, her stuff. with you and learn all of your, your things. Is this her new product? It's the cheddar. Oh yeah. Really good. It has, it's made from oats, navy beans, garbanzo, so sorry, Jules, um, potato starch. It's really good. So I recommend this. For bacon, although not the same, I keep this light life, smoky tempeh bacon. It's very good. Um, nothing really special about it. It's never gonna taste like bacon, but like I think this tastes really good. So I make it for like a BLT or something. Have you tried frying it in peanut oil? No. That's the move. Okay. Yeah. Does it make it like extra crispy, you think? It makes it crispy, but it also just adds extra flavor. It's super, super yummy. Put that, think about that the next time I make it. Um, what else do I have? This Trader Joe's soy chorizo is mm -hmm. excellent. It uses for tacos. So that's pretty tasty. And what else did I have special? I buy the Trader Joe's, <laughs> which is open for too long. The Trader Joe's extra firm tofu. Oh yeah, the high protein. I have the exact same thing, but I think it's like the true brand version. This one, Wildwood. Oh yeah, I've seen that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's the exact same product. Oh, just like they bring it into Trader Joe's. Own yeah. Um, Is it made from sprouted soybeans? It's, yeah, organic soybeans. Yep. By the way, I just had some, <clears throat> I had a bite of the chili and the cornbread, and it's really, really tasty. Oh, yeah, I need to make sure I take a photo. Okay. This is vegan Worcestershire sauce. I still don't know how to say that word, but normal stuff has anchovies in it. This one's anchovy free. I use that when I make Caesar salad dressing, which I currently have on hand. Ooh. Yeah, 
Karen, I just feel like you need to come back and teach us another thing. I will, if you'll have me. And then, okay, last thing. This is mayo. There's plenty of vegan mayo brands out there. The Just one's great. Um, Trader Joe's had a brand, a house brand for a while, but it disappeared. And follow your heart is like the OG one. Which one? Follow your heart. Oh, I think I've had that before. Yeah, it's the OG one. So all that to say, there are like tons of products out there. I love tasting all of them. Um, but there's plenty of things out there that like it's totally possible to substitute out. It takes a little bit of time. I didn't have someone like me to ask those questions to. So it would be an honor if anyone has a question on how to make a substitute because I kind of had to do a lot of research online until I got there, but I made it. And now I'm making things like chili and cornbread. Heck yeah. I want to make, so tell me more about this salad that you make with the miso dressing. Yeah, so it's a shroomami dressing. I use um, miso. I use that special vinegar. Rice vinegar? I use mirin. Oh, mirin, okay. So that's a special ingredient. Um, I think it has like rice vinegar in it too. I have to look it up. It's also has red pepper flakes. It's got definitely a kick to it. And then for the actual salad, it's chopped kale, uh, roasted mushrooms, roasted tofu, which if you've never had roasted tofu is really good. The plain stuff to me does not taste good, but it's all about like changing up the texture. Do you have to roast it yourself or you buy it? Yeah, so you cube it. That's kind of a long conversation. <laughs> but you can, like, take the tofu and you wrap it in a dish towel and then you press it. That Trader Joe's one I showed you, like basically doesn't even need to be pressed because it's so firm. Um, but you would cube it up and then kind of like toss it in a little bit of oil and salt and pepper it and roast it in the oven. Cool. That's like a good chewy texture to it. Yum. We might have to make that. We might have to do that. Would you come back, Sharon? Of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I, I feel like I cook all the same things. I need, I definitely need some fresh recipes. Yeah, I'd love to hear your fresh recipes too. I can get very bored. I like to create things and then I'm like, okay, been there, done that. I know how to make it now. Well, <laughs> My go-to is you take the chip and you dip it in the salsa. <laughs> You're every guy, Kyle. Avocado. Kyle drinks the salsa. And then the guacamole. Oh. You make guacamole, um. you dip up the avocado, and that's so cool. I've got, a, I've got a great vegan queso that takes 10 minutes. Ooh, yeah. It's great, and you don't feel bad eating it because it's not anything bad. It's like a little bit of almond milk. And flour. What, what do you have to make your own cheese? Well, I recently made um, cheese out of cashews. That's pretty good. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wait, so you probably did similar to what I was talking about earlier. What did you, what type of cheese did you make? Um, I put it on salmon. I made like cashews and with nutritional yeast. It's like an alfredo yeah. sauce. So you, yeah. oh, and then I made, a, I did make an alfredo last night actually too with almond milk and nutritional yeast. <laughs> Delicious. Yeah. That's yeah. great. I have not made alfredo. Have you, okay, the, the, one, the one recipe that you must make is vegan, it's called vegan yum yum Alfredo sauce. If you Google it, it's like old school. Yeah, I know we, we have to go soon, but that is worth a Google. Vegan yum yum Alfredo. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we eat a lot of yum sauce, but that's not vegan. <laughs> it's, sauce. it's a yum cafe. It's a cafe that's from Oregon and then they have their like token sauce. It's uh, made oh. out of soybeans. It's um, you. They they start out with these yum bowls um, where I'm from in Eugene, Oregon, and it's like brown rice, or you can do quinoa, black beans, um, olives, <laughs> yeah. lots of bowl, cheese if you want. Just um, make a bowl. A bowl. It's, it's yeah. just like a Buddha bowl or something. It's just like whatever you want. It's really good. Yeah. You can order it online too. So yeah. Nice. Cool. Well, we should do a, a exchange of the best condiments. Like, if y'all don't know about Chili Crunch, you got to get involved with some Chili Crunch. No, I can't find it at my store. This, 
is a jam. Anna, we need like an online market. This from our noodle yeah, place in Long Beach. Like really niche ingredients. Yeah, you know I, would, I would shop there. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're trying to work that out, you know? Get on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, um, it requires multiple grocery stores. Yes. yes, yes. I love it. Like, I love finding the new products and tasting them out and giving my honest feedback. Um, like there are things I would say not to try, but you don't have to try any of those because I already know what tastes good. Right, yeah, Lauren, you need to just, you, I, I feel like this, the, you need to be posting more about your food on Instagram or on a No, oh, I'm such a quiet person with that. I don't know why. I don't want to like fly. Ooh, I burned cream. I burned myself okay, last night. I'm okay, I'm okay, I'm okay. <laughs> The, the trick is you touch your ears. If you burn your fingers, I don't know why, but you touch your earlobes. It like cools them down. Oh, wow. That looks awesome. Oh, uh, you see it? That looks great. Don't <laughs> <laughs> yeah. lose it. Well, thanks for joining. This has been really fun. It's, it's fun for me to try teaching. I've never done this before, so. You're great at it. Yeah, you're great. Oh, yeah. Thank you. We got yeah. Really, Anna, you're set for two weeks. <laughs> yeah, I'm set for all of quarantine. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, take a picture of your food. I'll make sure I take a picture of mine too, once it's plated. Anna, do you have any last tips for plating? You could put like maybe green onion or avocado on top. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah you, got you got it. Y'all are got it. Got some cilantro. Oh, nice. Yeah, delicious. Yeah. What did you say, Kyle? I missed it. That would last me till Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> I know. I'm, so I'm dating somebody and he's the same way. He's like, he eats like a bag of chips in two days. I'm like, I don't know the last, like a bag of tortilla chips lasts me a month. And I, and about, I eat about an avocado a day. So yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> Me too. I don't, I don't know if like that's good or bad, but like I, I could go through tortilla chips that quickly, but yeah. not to. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you, thank you for being here. Hopefully we'll get Sharon back on and she can teach us how to make that roasted shroom salad. Yes, yeah. that's what I want too. Yes, please. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'm glad that you could join me and Izzy. Hi, yeah. yeah, great meeting you all. Bye. Nice meeting you too, Sharon. Thank you very much for your Enjoy time. your dinner. Thanks, Jules, for hosting. Of course. All right, guys. Talk to you soon.